میرے بھائی اور بہنوں السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مجھ سے قبل آپ آپ نے کافی علماء کی تقاریر سنی ہیں اللہ تعالیٰ سے دعا کرتا ہوں کہ اللہ تعالیٰ ہم سب کو عمل کرنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے آپ نے اکثر تقاریر جو ہیں وہ اردو میں سنی ہیں ان شاء اللہ آ ول بی ڈائورٹنگ انٹرنیشن شاء اللہ ود رسپیکٹ ٹو الدس ان شاء اللہ مبردز اینڈ سسٹرس ہاؤ کین وی لک آفٹر آور چلڈرن ہاؤ کین وی ریز آور چلڈرن اکارڈنگ ٹو دا سن آف رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سبحان اللہ چلڈرن آر گفٹ فرام اللہ سبحان و تعالی چلڈرنز آر گفٹ فرام اللہ سبحان و تعالی سم ٹائم اللہ سبحان و تعالی کین گف اے فیملی بوائز اینڈ گرلس سم ٹائمز اللہ سبحان و تعالی وانٹ ٹو گیو دیم بوائز Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to give them girls. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give them only one child. One boy or one girl. And sometimes, subhanallah, Allah does not want to give them children. And you will find a rich person, very rich person. Subhanallah, he hasn't got any children. And you will find a poor person, you will find a poor person He will have a five, six, seven, eight, ten children. This is blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you, you've got examples from the Quran. Quran is full. And subhanallah, sometimes you will find my brothers and sisters. Father is a Muslim and son or daughter they are kafir. Or you will find another way around. Or you will find another way around. Father is not a Muslim and children are Muslim. Children are not Muslim and fathers are Muslim, subhanallah. And again, this is examples even from the Anbiya, alayhi salatu wasalam, and Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam too. And you have a great example from Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Nuh, a great prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most beloved prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can say. His own son, his own son was not a Muslim. And you will find another prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was... Ulul Azm, a great, one of the greatest prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. After Ibrahim, all prophets came from his family. All prophets. But his father was not a Muslim. His father was not a Muslim. So my brothers and sisters, all children are a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All children are a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will ask us. So first, inshallah, I will give a quotation from the Quran, how to look after our children, how to bring our children according to the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. According to the Quran and the Sunnah. First, my brothers, Allah says in Surah Al-Luqman, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِإِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَذُلْمُ الْعَظِيمُ This is the first lesson which we need to give to our children. And this is what Luqman, This is what Luqman said to his children, his child. Ya bunayya la tushrik. La tushrik billah. Oh my son, do not make a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first lesson what we need to give to our children is about Tawheed. Wonders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is only one and we need to worship him. We are not allowed to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not allowed to ask other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not allowed to do sajda other than Allah. We are not allowed to do ruku other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to first lesson, we have to apply that into our own lives. And you know that my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly said, clearly said in the Quran, that Allah will not forgive the person who is involved in shirk. Allah will never ever forgive him unless if he has made tawbah. But other than that, it's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will forgive him after the punishment. But mushrik, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forgive him. Unless if he has made a tawbah. So the first lesson what we need to give to our children is about the tawheed. The oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam clearly said, clearly, once your child starts moving his tongue, what do you need to teach him? La ilaha illallah. But unfortunately, we don't. We do not teach our children, and this is a fact, either you agree with me or not. Majority of us Muslims, when our children start moving the tongue, either we will teach them bad words, or we will teach them a song, or we will teach them swearing, or we will teach them other things. 
But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, teach them la ilaha illallah. So if we taught them at the beginning, la ilaha illallah, then my brothers, inshallah, inshallah, they will listen to you. Inshallah. They will listen to you. See, when you want to seed something, you need to do some homework. Then it will raise. Similar for child, the first lesson you need to give your child is about the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the first nasiha, you can say, a first lesson you need to give to your child. Indeed, you were hearing earlier a beautiful talk by our brother about importance of mother. Subhanallah. Mothers are the first madrasa. Mother, subhanallah, is your first school. Mother is the one who can teach you right and wrong. Your father too can teach you right and wrong. But mother, subhanallah, mother is where the paradise is under her feet. That's what that's, this is clearly. And the father is the gate. Mother and father, they're very important. It's their duty to teach the children. And in return, children's duty is to obey them. Children are not allowed to say even the word of to their mother and father, regardless of what they're saying. Other than if they are calling towards shirk, don't listen to them. If they're telling you not to pray, don't listen to them. But if they are calling you for other reason, as you've heard, then you must try to listen to them and obey them. And by obeying them and listening to them, Allah's blessing will be upon you. My brothers, authentic hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clearly says, Allah does not reject the dua of your parents. The dua of parents is not rejected. And you don't, do not need to say to your mother, mother pray for me, father pray for me. No, mother and father are automatically praying for you. Automatically. Indeed, you may be as a child, maybe sometimes you're praying for, for your mother or your father. But mother and father, they're always praying for the children. I can give you one example. If a mother and father, if they want to go for Hajj, if they want to go for Hajj, then bear in mind, bear in mind that they are going for two reasons. Two reasons, one is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's no doubt on that. There's no doubt. That, and every Muslim, every single Muslim, who, whoever goes to Makkah al-Mukarma, he will go to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And the second reason is, what is it? The mother and father, they want to pray for their children. They want to pray for the children. And subhanAllah, there are great examples, my brothers. Mother does not go to sleep until the child returns to his house. Mother is always asking, why my soul so child has still not come back yet? My, why my own son, he hasn't come back yet. Normally he comes at this time. She gets worried. And this is the nature. Mothers loves us. Mother loves the children. But subhanAllah, Allah the creator, Allah loves us more than mothers 70 times but we completely forget that so my brothers and sisters always bear in mind that you need to teach your children the first lesson and that is the tawheed of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also my brothers in same surah there are so, so many other things uh in same surah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about uh, luqman uh, he says that ya bunayya aqim as salah ya bunayya aqim as salah Oh my son, stand for prayer. Prepare for prayer, get ready for prayer. Pray in other word. But how many of us do we pray? Parents. And we expect from our children that they will pray. If we Muslims are not praying, then our children won't. If we do not teach our children, then our children won't. So the second thing is prayer. We need to pray ourselves. We need to uh, pray five daily prayers and also teach our children five daily prayers. SubhanAllah, sometimes when the children reach at five, six, seven, we don't bring them to the, the masajid. Or sometimes even some committee members say, why are you bringing the children in the masjid? What's wrong with you? Why are you bringing the children? But if you look at the history of Islam, the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they used to bring children. I will give you, inshallah, evidence according to the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So my brothers, the second is that we need to pray and we need to teach our children pray. Wa'mar bil ma'roof. Again, you need to teach your child when he's even small. Wa'mar bil ma'roof. That your duty is to guide the people. Your duty is to tell the people what is, what is, what is right. Wa'mar bil ma'roof. Wa'mar bil ma'roof. Give them order about the goods. 
wanhanil munkar and tell them that be a, keep away yourself from the munkar and then also in same surah in same surah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us how to walk on the earth on the ground in streets and subhanallah again we don't as brother was giving example earlier according to some of our poets when they're singing some uh, anashids when our brothers are saying or even our sisters are saying they're dancing my brothers wallahi they're dancing full music and we gave them as a name of islamic anashid islamic poems not sharif or so and so and our brothers are dancing sisters are dancing that's against the teaching of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah has told us how to walk how to walk on the uh, on the earth allah says in the quran wala tusayil khaddaka lin nas wala tamshi fil ardi maraha do not walk as a proudness showing off and showing the others that you are you you are so high and others so low no we are all creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are all sons of adam and eve regardless muslims or non muslims we are all from adam and eve muslims and non muslims we need to respect non muslims yes they are all human beings they are our brothers they are our sisters not in islam but according to humanity they are our, our brothers and sisters and it's us living in non muslim society we need to think that in our mind if we see any non muslim so oh, is a kafir don't talk to him forget it no my brothers come on we are living with our non muslims your neighbor is a non muslim a person who you are studying with is a non muslim a person you are traveling with is a non muslim so you can't say that oh i don't want to talk to them or they kuffar allah will throw them into hell fire leave that to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your duty is to practice the religion of islam your duty is to call him towards islam but if yourself you're not practicing how will you call them how will you practice that religion of islam so first we muslims need to practice our religion and then call those people your duty is to call them then leave hidayah in allah's hand as rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said my brothers there are many other things but i will go to the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because i was given only 20, 25 minutes but inshallah i will try to finish within next 15 minutes but i will come on to the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so i said the first hadith first lesson what we need to give to our children is tawhid tawhid of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and telling them to keep away from shirk and the second one is praying five daily prayers we need to pray and we need to teach our children and this is the differ between muslim and a non muslim this is the differ between us and them you can say non muslims otherwise they are human being like us but the person who prays five daily prayers is best regardless his color and this is what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam clearly said alahad alladhi bainana wa bainahum as-salah fa man tarakaha faqad kafar the differ between muslims and non muslims is a prayer a person who does not pray then he's not from us this is what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said so we need to pray five daily prayers my brothers before that according to the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the way i put it anyway first right first right of father is to choose for his choose to, uh, for his children right mother he needs to choose a right mother and again according to the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam where the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says normally persons get married for four reasons four reasons either for the wealth or for the great family or for the beauty and the last thing rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says is for the religion and the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says if you have seen the sister who's practicing then hold it get it alhamdulillah if the sister is beautiful if the sister is she's got she's a wealthy if sister is from the high family and at the same time she's practicing then be thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get married to that person so you need to give your child a right mother right mother and subhanallah if we read we nearly every one of us read this uh these verses from the quran where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says rabbana atina fid dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhaban nar companions of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that rabbana atina fid dunya oh allah give us a good thing in this world the best thing in this world they said it's not a right wife good wife a good wife if you got a good wife best wife subhanallah your life will be easy and similar for our sisters 
If they've got a good husband, if they've got a good husband, best husband, alhamdulillah, their wife, their, 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 their life will be very easy. You cannot just say that's only for brothers, it's for sisters too. Both, they have to cooperate with each other. They have to cooperate with each other. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa also said that choose the family or the, the sister, the one who gives birth to the children. Go to that family. Subhanallah and choose. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I want to see my ummah yawm al-qiyamah mukathireen. A lot of, lots of my ummah yawm al-qiyamah. And you know the famous hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa uh, I'll just briefly say on that. When Uqasha radiallahu Abu, Abu Uqasha was sitting amongst the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was giving this lesson, beautiful hadith, and uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said uh, about the tawakkal, be firm on your aqeedah and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will give you a place in paradise and you will be able to take 70,000 people with you. 70,000 people with you. And then Uqasha radiallahu ta'ala, and we stood up, Abu Uqasha, he said, oh, Messenger of Allah, Pray for me that I will be one of them. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, Abu Qasha, you are from them. You are from them. So my brothers, always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe in, in, in uh, firm on the right aqeedah and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is enough for us insha'Allah. Also my brothers and sisters, uh, another hadith which is reported by Adelami, uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa says, Al-Waladu salih rayhanun riyadul jannah, rayhanini al-jannah. The good and pious child is like a gift from you from paradise. A gift from you from paradise. See, if a child is listening to his mother and father, then his life is easy. If the child is not listening, then that is hellfire for him in this, in this world. If the child is not coming to the masjid, if child is not praying, if child is not reading Quran, if child is looting, selling drugs, going here and there, and this is subhanAllah, what our children are doing. This is what our children are doing, selling drugs, Buying drugs, stealing cars, fraud, insurance fraud, other frauds. We Muslims are very forward in that. And sorry to say that. Sorry to, we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or Allah protect, protect us and protect our children. And therefore, a beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, every single child is born on fitrah, on nature. Every single child is born of nature. And what is the nature? That they are Muslim. And it is mother and father that they will turn them into Christians. They will turn them into a Jews. They will turn them into a mushrik or a person who does not even believe in anything. It's mother and father. So it's their duty. It is their duty. And therefore another hadith, which is a famous hadith, I think you, will, you must have heard this from every single uh, scholar, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kullukum ra'in wa mus'oolun ra'yati fal imamu ra'in mus'oolun ra'yati wa rajul ra'in fi ahli wa huwa mus'oolun ra'yati wal fal mar'atu ra'yatun fi bayti zawjiha That everyone has been given responsibilities. Everyone, imam, the leader of Muslims, Allah will ask him, I gave you to rule this world, this, this town, this city, this country. How did you rule that? And similar, a man will be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah, Allah says, I have, I've given you the, I give you the children. How did you look after them? A mother will be asked, a wife will be asked, that how did you bring your children? How did you brought them up according to the sunnah or not? So there are many, many other things, my brothers. And I will mention you uh, another hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa How to teach them. Sometimes our brothers and sisters, they lose their temper. If a child is making a mistake, they'll bang them, hit them. And this is against the teaching of Islam. This is against the teaching of Islam, subhanAllah. A lot of our teachers even, and I, I, I will I'm not hide this, a lot of our brothers, those who are teaching the masajids. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them hidayah. And but we shouldn't hit them. This was in, in this country, in UK, it was permissible in, in past. I myself, when I used to go to school, when children, they did not need, used to listen. And I'm not talking about Islamic school, normal secondary and primary school. Normal secondary and primary school. We used to get cane. We used to get slippers. Bang down, come on, slippers. This was permissible. But now it is not. It is against the law of this land. Against the law of this land to hit any child. And we say that as a Muslim, that it is against Islam. And great example for us is that Messenger of Allah never ever, never ever hit any child. 
He had children, but he never hit them. And that's Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's own children, Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha, Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, Ibrahim, Tahir, Tayyib, and even the children of companions, and even the grandchildren, Hassan and Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anha. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never ever hit them, never. You will not find a single, single saying or practice of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he hit any children. And I've got great proof of that is Anas radiallahu ta'ala anha. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a great. And he said that I served Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for more than 10 years. More than 10 years, not one year, more than 10 years. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever, never ever said to me, Oh son, oh boy, why did you do this? Or why you did not do this? Not even once. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a great example for us. Same Anas radiallahu anhu, he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa his hands were so soft. His hands were so soft. He was, it was like a harir, you can say, or so naim, you know they say in Arabic, so soft that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa never ever used his head. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, beautifully this example for us, uh, and Abi Salma, Abdullah bin Abdul Asad, how to bring the children if they make mistakes. Not to hit them, not to shout them loudly, nicely and politely. And then leave hidayah into Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hand. But if a father himself is eating with left hand, if father himself is smoking, if father himself is drinking, if father himself is doing wrong things, how can he stop his child? How can he stop his child? If father himself is involved in drugs, if father himself is dr drinking alcohol, my brothers, wa billah. So we've got a great example from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, قَالَ كُنْتُ غُلَامًا فِي حِجْرِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَكَانَ يَدَيَّ تَتِيشْ فِي السَّحْفَةِ فَقَالَ لِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ يَا غُلَامْ سَمِّ اللَّهِ وَكُلْ بِيَمِينِكُ وَكُلْ مِمَّا يَلِيكَ Beautiful the hadith is reported by Imam Bukhari and Muslim. And he said, I was a small child, grew up, grew up in Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم's house. And food was brought in a plate. And this is the tradition of Arabs, that they eat in one plate. And again, it's a sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But unfortunately, we've left that. And we are using single plates. I'm not saying that's against. Alhamdulillah, it's okay. We, we do not waste the food. But it is best to eat in one plate. And this is the tradition of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The food was presented and this child was in Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi house. Probably he was hungry. And he started eating from here, there, from here, from that side. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he saw, beautifully, my brothers, look at the, look at the word. Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Ghulam, O son, O son, Samillah. When you eat, this, this is the adab and correct, correct way of eating. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh my son, Samillah, say Bismillah when you eat. Say Bismillah when you eat. Wa kul bi yaminik, and eat with your right. Wa kul bi yaminik, and eat with your right. And another hadith, why? Why do we have to eat, to eat with our right? Because the shaitan is using his left hand. Shaitan is drinking with his left hand. Shaitan is eating with his left hand. Therefore, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa says, always use your right hand for good cause. And this is what Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha reported. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa loved for all good causes, for all good work. He sallallahu alayhi wa used to come first from right. He used to wear his shoes right. He used to wear his trousers from right. He used to eat with his right, clean his, his teeth from right side and many other things. So here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that eat with your right hand. وَكُلْ مِمَّا يَلِيكَ And do not eat from this side or here or there, no. Whatever is in front of you. Whatever is in front of you. My brothers and sisters, two more ahadiths inshallah. Two more ahadiths. One is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, says that adibu uh, awladukum ala thalatha. I'm, I'm cutting to a few hadiths, but this is that teach your child's nice character, good character, good manner. And here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is hadith reported in Tabrani, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam adibu awladukum ala thalatha khasal. Teach them three things at least. Teach them three things at least. One is Hubbi Nabiyyukum sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hubbi Nabiyyukum sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Teach them the love towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We say that, but how, what does it mean by Hubbi Nabiyyukum? Don't pray? No. Don't pray, don't fast? No. 
hub of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Whatever Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did, as you were uh, listening earlier, the hadith is whatever Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, whatever Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did, whatever uh, companions of Allah taala practiced in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he kept quiet, and that is. That's what you need to teach your children. Hub of Rasulullah. We all love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But if we just say, oh, we love Rasulullah, we don't pray. We love Rasulullah, we won't read Quran. We love Rasulullah, we will lie. We, will, we love Rasulullah and we will still steal. Then that's not. That's not. If you want to teach your children, then teach them that we should love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, La yu'min wahadukum hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi min waladihi wa, wal wa walidihi wa nasi ajma'in. That teach your children and that true believer can't be that until he believes that he loved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam more than himself, more than his children, more than anything, more, more than anybody. And you've got great example of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, O Messenger of Allah, I love you. I love you more than anybody apart from myself. Apart from myself. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam just kept quiet and put his hand on his chest. And then Umar radiallahu ta'ala said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I love you more than myself. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Your iman is completed. Your iman is completed. Second thing is, Hub of Ahl al Bayt. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Hub of the, the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the family does not mean only Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein radiallahu anha. No. Family of Rasulullah, his wives. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. You've got Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha. You've got all wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and all daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa all children of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We love them, yes, more than ourselves. We love them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last one is Watilawatul Quran. Reading of Quran. Reading of Quran, my brothers. If we do read Quran every day, if we tell our children to read Quran, then you will see the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will see blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshaAllah. And there's another hadith of uh, Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu insha'Allah for other occasion bi'idhnillahi ta'ala that whenever you want to ask, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever you want to ask, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a strength to keep ourselves towards to, on, on the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and teach our children the right aqeedah and bring them according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. As you heard earlier from our guest, what he was saying, the differ amongst ourselves, differ amongst ourselves, and subhanAllah, differ amongst the brothers who were praying in the same masjid. And what were the companions of the Allah ta'ala anhu? They had to differ. I'm not saying they don't, they didn't, but they had to differ in the respect. And subhanAllah, if you want to listen, listen to them or see, see their, their life, and you will see how they used to love each other to get the good deeds. And according to the Sahih and authentic hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when two companions are going together, and if the tree is in, in, in between them, they used to say salam to one each other. Yes. In each, one each other. And this is what we need to say. Yes. Salam alaykum to each other. Love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah's blessing will be upon you inshaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam.